The Lockheed U-2 spy plane first entered American service in 1957 and incredibly is still in US Air Force service today in 2020. A single jet engine ultra high level reconnaissance aircraft, in the early days they were used by the CIA to photograph sensitive sites in the Soviet Union. Considered immune from interception as they cruised at 60 plus thousand feet above the earth, this immunity was rudely shattered when a U-2 was downed over the Soviet Union in 1960, hit by a new surface-to-air missile. The pilot, Francis Gary Powers, was eventually exchanged in Berlin in 1962 for convicted Soviet spy Rudolf Abel. The U-2 was constantly upgraded with new models entering service in the 1980s. The U-2 was still considered safe from fighter interception. It was believed that no aircraft could touch it. That was until 1984, and a very interesting encounter with probably the best interceptor the Royal Air Force ever possessed, the famous English Electric Lightning. The Lightning wasn't much younger than the U-2, having entered RAF service in 1959. It was a wild man, a plane pilots described flying as like being saddled to a skyrocket. It was the only British-designed and built fighter capable of Mach 2. Its two Rolls-Royce Avon turbojets fitted staggered within the fuselage, producing not only high speed, but an exceptional rate of climb. It takes about three and a half minutes to climb to 36,000 feet from brake release. The aircraft is now leveling off and power is reduced to maintain 0.9. A Roger 14 maintain 36. From 0.9, the aircraft accelerates to 1.6 mach. Radar clearance must be obtained for flights in excess of Mach 1. 1-4 showing request clearance for high speed. Uh, Roger 1-4, back to 0-9-0. On this heading you are clear for high speed. The pilot now selects maximum reheat. Lightning takes two and a half minutes to accelerate to 1.6. Initial acceleration is high, but falls off in the transonic region. Due to a shock wave disturbance over the pressure head, there is a gradual fall in indicated altitude, which is rectified by a jump up occurring at 1.04 Mach. After 1.2, the rate of acceleration increases, and care must be taken not to exceed maximum limitations. At 1.6 Mach, the pilot pulls up into a zoom climb and can reach 56,000 feet in one minute. This is a climb from 36,000 feet at 20,000 feet per minute. Designed to intercept attacks on Britain's V-bomber airfields and shoot down Soviet nuclear-armed supersonic bombers, once ballistic missiles replaced this sort of attack, the Lightning's role was to intercept high-flying bomber and reconnaissance types, primarily the Soviet Tupolev Tu-16 and the Tupolev Tu-95 Bear bomber. But quite how high a lightning could go into the stratosphere wasn't exactly known. The handbook gave a service ceiling of 60 plus thousand feet, but could a lightning catch a U-2, the world's highest flying aircraft? The only way to find out was to try. The 1984 test was not to be the first interceptions of U-2s by lightnings, but the highest yet made. In September 1962, a series of tests had been run intercepting U-2s, flying out of RAF Upper Hayford using the older Lightning F-53. During these exercises, the U-2s flew at between 60 and 65,000 feet. Fourteen attempted interceptions were made, with four successful.
But as technology developed, the U-2 flew ever higher until, by 1984, it was believed to be untouchable. Flight Lieutenant Mike Hale was a Lightning pilot in Number、no. Eleven Squadron at RAF Binbrook. In 1984, his aircraft XR729 had the tail code BM and was known in the squadron as Big Mother. Noted by pilots as a very hot ship, even for a Lightning. During a major NATO exercise, the U.S. Air Force agreed to allow an interception by an RAF Lightning to be attempted on one of their U-2s, considered immune from this sort of thing. Hale and some of the other pilots from 11 Squadron had some impressive records under their belts. Hale and XR749 had participated in an unofficial time-to-height trial against F-104 starfighters from Aalborg in Denmark during a squadron exchange at Binbrook in April 1984. The Lightnings had won all the races with ease, except the low-level supersonic acceleration, which ended with a dead heat. Hale now turned his attention to the U-2. XR749 really was tremendously quick, even for a Lightning, and in September 1983 had accelerated to an astounding Mach 2.3, or one and a half thousand miles per hour. Taking off from Binbrook, Hale climbed up and up into the stratosphere, acquiring the U-2 at an altitude of 66,000 feet. Hale passed the U-2 and continued climbing rapidly before beginning to move into his intercept position. Records show that he climbed to a zoom height of 88,000 feet, or 16.6 miles above the Earth. The U-2 pilot gobsmacked by the British fighter's outstanding performance. At 88,000 feet, the sky was dark and the curvature of the Earth was visible. The flight proved that the U-2 was not immune from interception, but fortunately for the Americans, the Lightnings were allies rather than foes. But the Lightning wasn't quite done breaking records just yet. The following year, Flight Lieutenant Hale had an opportunity to demonstrate the Lightning against another revolutionary aircraft, Concorde. The world's only supersonic airliner. British Airways was trialing Concorde in April 1985. The type was very quick. Capable of twice the speed of sound at Mach 2.04, or 1,354 miles per hour, British Airways kindly offered Concorde as a target to NATO, and a whole panoply of interceptors, including F-15s and F-16s, F-14 Tomcats, Mirages, and the venerable F-104 Starfighter, attempted to catch the airliner, but none could. Well, except one. Lightning XR749, and XR749 was probably the only Lightning with the legs to manage it. Incredibly, Hale managed to overtake Concorde on a stern conversion intercept. The British Airways crew were suitably impressed. In total, 337 Lightnings of all marks were built before the type left RAF service in 1988. As for the rather special lightning that broke an altitude record for the type, caught a U-2, and overtook Concorde, XR749 was preserved for some years at the Teesside Airport in the north of England. Currently, she is in Scotland at the Peterhead Complex of Score UK, a company servicing North Sea oil and gas rigs as a gate guardian. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share. You can also visit my new audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. Details below. You can help support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details also in the description box.